Another cup of Maxwell House coffee, George? Sure. Pour me a cup, Gracie. You know, Maxwell House is always good to the last <laughs> drop. And that drop's good, too. Yes, it's Maxwell House coffee time, transcribed in Hollywood and starring George Burns and Gracie Allen. <laughs> With yours truly, Toby Reed, B. Benaderet, Elvia Allman, Gail Gordon, Lou Merrill, Harry Lubin and the Maxwell House Orchestra, and Bill Goodwin. For America's Thursday night comedy enjoyment, it's George and Gracie. And for America's everyday coffee drinking enjoyment, it's Maxwell House. Always good to the last drop. Shortly after breakfast this morning, Gracie disappeared into the kitchen. After more than an hour had passed, George went in and found her almost completely buried in a shambles of pots and pans. Gracie, what in the world are you making? Some homemade pastry for the girls. Blanche Morton and Clara Bagley are coming over for our weekly card game. I thought there were four of you. What happened to Hazel Hopkins? Oh, she's still in the group, but each week one of the girls stay home. Why is that? Well, it gives the other three more to talk about. <laughs> Well, that's a nice, friendly arrangement. Mm. Uh, why are you going to so much trouble? Well, the last time I served a homemade cake, the girls accused me of buying it from a bakery. But you didn't. No. I bought it from a grocery store. <laughs> it was mean of them to doubt you. Well, the girls like to tease me because they're all so good at baking. Mm. They even have things ended up now at the county fair. But when they get here today, they're in for a surprise. Something really fancy will come out of this kitchen, huh? Yeah, but it won't come out until I've baked the cake. <laughs> uh, would you mind telling me what you're making? You seem to have used up every pot and pan in the house. Well, I had a few failures. First, I tried a butterscotch cake, but it was no good. What was wrong with it? Well, I don't know. I used plenty of butter and a bottle of your best scotch. <laughs> You didn't. I did. You did, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> then, then I tried to make a chocolate pudding. I mixed milk and chocolate in a pan and put it on the fire and went away for 20 minutes. When I came back, it had burned. Why did you go away for 20 minutes? Well, those were the instructions that said, put it on the fire and beat it for 20 minutes. <laughs> Make a jelly roll. Oh, which reminds me, dear, be careful where you walk. Uh, what do you mean? You can't roll jelly. <laughs> Red's all On over the, the floor. floor. Yes. <laughs> a jelly just won't roll. Uh, now I know why housewives are forming. Don't be a Gracie clubs for home safety. What do you mean? Uh, jelly on the floor is dangerous. You might slip and fall right on your head. Oh, I see what you mean. I might knock myself unconscious. A little too late for that. <laughs> nothing, nothing. Uh, why don't you give up the idea of making anything? Oh, I'm on the right track now. A simple recipe that's sure to be good. I'm mixing it up in this big bowl. For Pete's sake, what's in that stuff? A pound of flour, a pound of sugar, a pound of butter, and a pound of baking soda. And that's going to be a, a pound cake. Yeah. <laughs> Look, honey, this is National Donut Week. Why don't you serve Mayflower donuts? Oh, I can't make Mayflower donuts. I bought this flower in April. <laughs> uh, the Mayflower is a donut shop. Oh, well, I promised the girls something homemade, and I've got to deliver. Well, if it means so much to you, maybe I can help. You can? How? Well, I never told you before, but I'm pretty good at baking something. My mother used to make them, and I sold them, and she taught me how to make them. Oh, taught you how to make what? Well, never mind. Just run along and leave it to me. Well, Judge, I want to know. Well, if I tell you, you've got to promise to hold your tongue. That's what they think? <laughs> I mean, you've got to promise not to tell anybody. Oh, 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 I promise. Now, what can you make? I can make? Yeah. Gosh, I, I feel silly. Oh, well, come on, Judge. What is it? Uh, lady fingers. <laughs> That's sweet. Now, don't you breathe this to a soul. Well, why not? I think it's wonderful. Gracie, if this gets around, people will kid the pants off me. Well, what do you care? You'll be wearing an apron. <laughs> <laughs> you see that you keep it quiet. 
I don't want the whole town making fun of me. Well, what's funny about a man making lady fingers? I think it's nice and sweet and... <laughs> now, cut that out. <laughs> Serious, darling. I'm proud to have a husband who could... <laughs> One more snicker out of you and I won't raise a finger. Oh, you raised them. I thought you baked them. <laughs> Never mind. Just remember this. If you tell anybody that I made ladyfingers, I'm leaving home. Oh, all right, dear. I won't tell. <laughs> Gracie, before we go, could I have another one of those delicious lady fingers? Me too, Gracie. They're divine. Well, I'm glad you like them, girls. They're homemade. Really? Mm -hmm. Where did you get such a talent for making lady fingers? I met him in vaudeville. <laughs> what? Oh, uh, that is the person who taught me. Oh, I've never tasted anything so light and fluffy. Um, do you have some special way of folding in the eggs? <laughs> no, no, just fry them good and hard first. <laughs> Dry them? Well, it's very hard to fold a raw egg. You, you, you can't get the corners neat. <laughs> oh, you sly rascal. You're not giving away any secrets, are you? Well, I hope not. Say, Gracie, I'm going out to the county fair to enter my angel food cake. Why don't you let me enter these lady fingers, too? Oh, oh sure, Gracie. A person who can make lady fingers like these deserves publicity. Oh, no, Blanche, no. A judge wouldn't like it. Does he have to stick his big nose in the cooking? No, he usually stirs it with a spoon. <laughs> oh, go ahead and answer them, Gracie. No, no, I'm sure George wouldn't approve. Well, we'll be running along then. I've got to drive downtown and pick up my husband. Oh, still can't hold his liquor, huh? <laughs> oh, no. Come along, Clara. See you again, Gracie. And goodbye, Gracie. And goodbye, girl. Blanche. Yeah, Clara. While Gracie wasn't looking, I wrapped these lady fingers in a napkin. I'm going to enter them at the fair in spite of George. Good. It burns me up the way he doesn't want Gracie to have any publicity. He takes all the credit. All the cash, too. <laughs> I wonder why Gracie ever married him. Maybe low forwards were in style then. <laughs> Your lady fingers were a sensation. The girls adored them. You didn't spill the beans, did you? I didn't serve any. Just lady fingers. <laughs> you didn't tell the girls that I made them? Oh, no, no. Of course not. Good. I do have a reputation in show business. I don't want people laughing at me. Oh, well, don't you worry, darling. People never laughed at you, and they're not going to start now. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me feel better. Come, Come in. in. Howdy, little lady. Howdy, little man. Why, Mr. Judson, come right in. Well, the fabulous Texan. What brings you to California, Tex? Uh, a business trip, little man. A fellow named Howard Hughes is dickering to buy a little piece of my Texas ranch. Oh, have you closed the deal? Uh, not yet, no. I can't decide whether to sell him New Mexico or Arizona. <laughs> Fair size ranch this kid's got. Anyhow, while I'm here, I'd admire to mix a little pleasure with business, so I dropped by to see if you folks would join me in a visit to your county fair. Or as we call it down home, the county wonderful. You call it the wonderful? Well, anything that's fair in the rest of the country is it's wonderful, wonderful in Texas. Texas. <laughs> I, uh, I should have known. Well, it sounds like fun, Mr. Judson. They have some amazing things at the fair. Yeah, yeah. I hear tell they got a hog that weighs a thousand pounds. I sure do want to see that. You haven't got anything like that in Texas, huh? No, sir, not that small. <laughs> no, uh, we feed them so they'll grow. I see. Yeah. Why, three times a day I fill my pen with garbage. Really? George fills his pen with ink. <laughs> talking about a pig pen. Oh, go on. Pigs can't write. <laughs> they probably can in Texas. <laughs> Mr. Judson, I'm surprised you let those prize hogs of yours eat garbage. This is Texas garbage. Oh, the good stuff. 
can't help myself. Well, let's get out to the fair. Yeah, yeah, I'm anxious to see that little midget hog. A small one, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Someday I want you folks to see the big fat boy I got down home. Oh, we'd love to, Mr. Judson, but that's no way to talk about your wife. <laughs> That's no way to talk. If... Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like your sense of humor, man. Let's go to the fair. Attention, ladies and gentlemen. Your attention, please. Here are the winners of the pastry baking competition. Listen, I'll bet Clara Bagley won for her angel food cake. First prize goes to Mrs. George Burns for her lady fingers. What? Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, there's been a mistake. Excuse me a minute, boys. Oh, um, I'm sorry, mister, but I can't accept the prize. Well, don't you want the blue ribbon? It isn't fair to give me the prize for something my husband takes, so just take me out of the contest. As you wish, Mrs. Burns. Thank you. Correction, ladies and gentlemen. First prize in the pastry division does not go to Mrs. George Burns. Ah, oh, that's better. The prize-winning lady fingers were baked by Mr. George Burns. <laughs> is Mr. Burns in the crowd? Yeah, yeah, here he is. Here. Step right up, Mr. Burns. I want everyone to meet the 1949 King of the Lady Fingers. I wish I were dead. <laughs> season for April showers, but when they come your way, don't let them dampen your spirits. Just remember that rain or shine, the day's sure to look brighter when your breakfast starts with a fragrant, cheering cup of truly good coffee. Delicious Maxwell House coffee. It's America's favorite, you know, bought and enjoyed by more people than any other brand of coffee at any price. Why this great preference for Maxwell House? The answer, of course, is flavor. Heartwarming, good-to-the-last-drop flavor that only Maxwell House coffee gives you. And there's just one way to create the superb flavor. It's the blending of many choice coffees. Premium varieties of highland-grown Latin American coffees, which our Maxwell House experts select with utmost care and skill. First, they choose Manizales coffees for mellowness. Next, Medellins are added for richness. Other fine coffees contribute vigor. And Bucaramangas round out the fine, full body. This superb Maxwell House blend is then radiant roasted to flavor perfection and brought to you vacuum-packed in the familiar blue Maxwell House tin. And ladies, vacuum packing is mighty important, for air steals the flavor of coffee in ordinary packages. But Maxwell House is carefully vacuum-packed, so it comes to you just as fresh and fragrant as the very hour it was roasted. Friends, why be satisfied with anything but the best in coffee-drinking pleasure? Tomorrow, enjoy Maxwell House. Always good to the last drop. Well, it is now the day after George's Ladyfingers won the blue ribbon at the county fair, and we find him hiding at home, a haunted, crushed, and broken man. King of the Ladyfingers. I'll never let this down. The whole town's laughing at me. Oh, please, George. I, I can't bear the hurt look in those big, soft brown eyes. Like a cow who's been milked with chopped hands. <laughs> I promise 
you wouldn't tell anyone. Oh, all right. I admit I made a mistake, darling. For the first time in my life, I did something silly. <laughs> Everybody knows about my lady fingers. When I got on the bus this morning, four men got up and offered me their seats. <laughs> They were just being smart, Alex. Two men would have left plenty of space for you to sit. I got so mad, I dared them to step off the bus at the first corner. Did they do it? Yeah. What happened? I don't know. I rode on and left them standing there. <laughs> then I made a mistake of stopping at the Friars Club. They murdered me. Oh, poo to the Friars. They're just jealous. Jealous? Oh, sure. All they can do is fry. You can bake. <laughs> What a feeling I took. Groucho, Harpo, and Chico made me an honorary Marx brother. Sweeto. Oh, those beasts. Come in. Hello, Gracie. Hello, Toby. Hiya, Toby. Well, if it isn't the Ladyfinger champion. Now, look, Toby. I expected to find you in the kitchen greasing your pan. <laughs> Toby, he's too upset even to shave it. <laughs> George, I just dropped by to show you today's paper There's a picture of you right here with your ladyfinger recipe This publicity will kill me <laughs> Sid <laughs> Gary won't even want me back <laughs> No, you're wrong, George It's great for you Why, I happen to know you're going to get a big offer from NBC I'm on NBC <laughs> I'm at the National Biscuit Company <laughs> I think I'll join the French Foreign Legion. Oh, can't you say something that'll cheer him up, Toby? He's terribly low. Oh, cheer up, George. People will soon forget this. It won't last long. People won't forget this if I live to be a hundred. That's what I say. It won't last long. <laughs> out, out, out. Now, hmm, you see what you've done? My picture in the paper. I'm disgraced forever. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. And, and I, I can't bl blame people for laughing. It is ridiculous for a man to make lady fingers. Oh, there's how I can help. I'll call the newspaper and tell them that you're really a woman. <laughs> Gracie. I'll say there was a mix-up at the wedding, and I married the matron of honor. <laughs> Gracie, put down that phone. No good, huh? Awful. Come in. Hi, Gracie. Oh, hello, Blanche. Uh, don't get jealous, but I came over to talk to your husband. I thought we might swap some recipes. <laughs> Kicking a man when he's down. Well, he, he's awfully upset, Blanche. Please don't mention cooking. Well, I just thought I'd give him a rib. No use. He won't cook it. <laughs> Harry sent this present over for George. Oh, how sweet. I'll open it, dear. Oh, look. A pair of shorts with lace on them. <laughs> yeah. He said since George was cooking now, he could use a fancy pot holder. <laughs> you tell your moronic husband that I don't need shorts with lace on them. That's right, Blanche. She's got a dozen pairs. <laughs> I haven't worn them since our honeymoon. Oh, yes, I remember now. He didn't like them. The lace kept tickling his ankles. <laughs> What's that other package, Blanche? Well, this is the day they have the needlework competition at the fair, and I'm entering these crochet doilies. Oh, oh, I hope you win. I've got a good chance, unless George enters some. <laughs> <laughs> you better... Leave before I forget you're a woman. If that's what you are. <laughs> of course she's a woman. If you saw her in a bathing suit, you'd know it. She, she's got the name Blanche embroidered on it. <laughs> There's another way to tell I'm a woman. I make lady fingers. All right, Blanche, I warned you. Now you're going out this door. Let go of me. Out. Oh, George, you hurt Blanche. Get your hands off I of said me. out, and I mean out. You Come leave on. me alone. Come on. Come on. Oh, let him back in, Blanche, huh? <laughs> okay. George, what are you doing with your old vaudeville trunk? Packing it. 
going to get out of town and do a single act. Until well, this thing blows over. Oh. But, George... <laughs> Do your vaudeville act alone again. I did pretty well. Remember the long run I had in Altoona? Yeah, the manager chased you clear to the depot. <laughs> now, help me pack. Oh, come in. Hi, Gracie. Hello, Bill. Hi, Lady Fingers. <laughs> Bill, I'm warning you. I've had all the kidding I can stand. Oh, yes, Bill. He's so mad now he's leaving home. What's he going to do? Open up Mother Burns' Lady Finger Lounge? <laughs> I'm going back into vaudeville. I did it once, and I can do it again. But, George, you're not as strong as you used to be. That, that's right, George. You can't turn back the clock. Oh, he can hardly wind his watch. <laughs> you better stay in the kitchen, muffin head. I warned you, Bill. Stop kidding me. Now, don't stamp your foot, honey. If you got a cake in the oven, it'll fall. in the oven. Oh, making fudge today, huh? <laughs> now stop that before I get sore. What did you do, strike me with your mix, master? <laughs> All right, that did it. You fired. Fired off the program? You heard me. You threw. You mean I can't talk about Maxwell House coffee anymore? That's what I mean. I can't tell the people that Maxwell House is rich, delicious, and mellow? No. George, you can't do this to me. Oh, please don't cry, Bill. Maybe you can get a job at a better salary. Salary, Schmallery. Who cares about money? I just want to tell people that Maxwell House is a blend of choice Latin American coffees. I... Bill. Lady and roasted to the very peak of flavor perfection. Bill. If I can't do that, I'll just die. Please don't fire me, George. Please, please. Okay, you're hired again. Please let me keep on saying that Maxwell House is America's favorite brand of coffee. You can. I hired you back. Please, I've just got to say that it's good to the last drop. You're hired. I'll even give you a raise, Bill. I just don't want to go on living if I have to forget those metal and those monazolas and those wonderful, flavorful little buca romangas. <laughs> Bill, you can stop. I hired you back. Yeah, I know you did. <laughs> then why did you keep on talking about Maxwell House coffee? I'm still plugging for that summer replacement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, I thought you'd catch on, Lady Fingers. <laughs> Bill, I told you never to mention Lady Fingers again. Now, George, you should be proud of what you baked. After all, it's the first dough you ever made without Gracie. <laughs> Goodbye, replacement. <laughs> Goodbye, Uncle Jemima. <laughs> From now on, I'll be kidded by everybody who sees me. Well, not if you have a disguise. Hold still a minute. Hey, what are you doing? Uh, drawing a mustache on you with my eyebrow pencil. Hey, Gracie. Yeah, now nobody will recognize you. Don't be silly. What did you say, Sam? <laughs> <laughs> now, Lily, stop. Don't answer it. It's probably just another smart aleck with some joke. Ah, I bet it isn't. Come in. Howdy, little lady. Oh, uh, Mr. Judson. Uh, no, no, not you, ma'am. I was talking to the lady finger champ. <laughs> I know it. Gracie, I'm locking myself in the den and I'm not coming out for a week. My, he's riled up. He must be taking this mighty hard. Oh, if only George could win a prize for making something rugged and manly. Then people would forget about the lady fingers. Say, look, take this fancy belt I'm wearing and enter it under his name. I done all the leather work and made the buckle from some gold I dug out of my yard down home. <laughs> you, you found gold in your yard? Yeah, yeah, it was part of an old Texas sewer pipe. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful, Mr. Judson. Now, let's see. What can I wrap it up in? Well, now, uh, here's a package on the floor. You can use some of this paper. All right. Oh, my goodness. These are Blanche Morton's crochet doilies. She must have dropped them. Well, while I'm at the fair, I'll enter them for it. Yeah. A and your husband is bound to get a prize for this bill. <laughs> you won't find a prettier one if you look until Oklahoma freezes over. Oh, <laughs> George, 
Dodge, and we'll go right to the fair. Thank you for the bell. Well, I- I'm glad to lend you a hand. Oh, you better not. You'll need both of them to hold up your pants. <laughs> <laughs> I need them both to hold. <laughs> oh, it's too hot to do that again. Attention, attention, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, George, this may be the announcement that'll make you the proudest man alive. Your attention, please. What did you What did you enter for me? Well, you find out. In the handicraft division. First prize goes for a hand-tooled leather belt. Yeah, I knew it. Entered by Mrs. Blanche Morton. <gasps> Uh-oh. Let's go home, dear. <laughs> In the needlecraft division, first prize for crochet doilies goes to that remarkably versatile man, <laughs> Mr. George Burns. That's why. Come on. You entered doilies for me? <laughs> I, I got the packages mixed up. George, George. Where are you going? I'm going over to the shooting gallery. <laughs> Put a gun to my head and start shooting. Oh, no, George. After what I've done to you today, I don't deserve a Cupid doll. Friends, what do you expect of the future? Financial security? Home of your own? A good education for the children? All right, choose the future you want and start buying it now through the regular purchase of United States savings bonds. For every $3 you invest in these bonds today, you get back $4 10 years from now. So buy United States savings bonds regularly where you work. Or if you prefer, buy them through your bank. Remember, automatic saving is sure saving. Good night, folks. If you like good things the easy way, good things the easy way, instant Maxwell House, that's for you. No trouble, no grounds, no pops, and it's good to the very last, you know what? Yes, instant Maxwell House means great coffee instantly in your cup. Here's real instant coffee, all pure Maxwell House coffee in instant form. Enjoy instant Maxwell House instantly. Good to the very last, you know what? when our guest will be Bill Boyd, the screen's Hopalong Cassidy. Good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House. The George Burns and Gracie Allen Show was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Paul Henning and Keith Fowler. The dictionary calls the shots on this quiz show. It's Noah Webster Says, with genial Haven McQuarrie as MC. Stay tuned... On NBC.